we fight to gain what we cannot take with us. It's in our nature. At the beginning here, I, I seem to be kung fuing this poor, poor woman with my uh, big green stick. And I just didn't see her. I was kind of rushing when I was doing this mission because I'd already recorded it and something went wrong. So I had to come back and do it again. And when you know what you're doing in a game such as this, it can often hinder your performance because you try and push it What's and the, the game just doesn't do well under pressure. So the particular challenge for this mission is to use Henry as a distraction and the only way to do this is to look at enemies and it'll say above their heads press the right bumper. When you do that he'll go down and he'll do his distraction technique which generally involves standing in the midst of them for ages and then finally doing something. It's, it's a really stupid mechanic and it doesn't look very good at all. But he's going to lure some people away, we can go down and look at the chests and uh, the particular mechanic that this level employs is there are three chests, whichever one you go to the last will be the one that triggers where we need to go. Because there is nothing in any of the chests and then Henry ends up getting captured. But um, rather than using that guy as a distraction, once you've used him twice as a distraction, you want to use smoke bombs for the rest because it just takes too long. Like you are so much more mobile, you have so many more tools than he does, it's such a better strategy and it'll enable you to push this mission forward and get to the point that's actually, you know, going to drive the story of, of exactly what you're doing right now and it's just one of those interesting things that the game wants you to do, that the player wants to supersede and uh, you butt heads in that and the final boss is hilarious for that because it's just like it was in Unity, where the boss has this, essentially, this knockback ability. And it almost seems like the game wants you to figure out this pattern through this knockback technique that it does. So that you're doing some climbing and swinging and, you know, changing your approach. But you don't have to. You can literally block it with your face. And because of the way that the time limit works, you can just run through it, getting hit two or three times, and then get to the boss and continue fighting. So it goes from being something that could be methodical and could require, you know, pattern memorization and actually be challenging to just an absolute joke of, I'm going to block this with my face and then I'm going to beat you up and I'm going to repeat that. And I mean, you can make it look cleaner, but it's just a really ugly fight. And I was really disappointed with it. And I think the thing that got to me the most was I don't think I'd have felt any better about it had I got through the, the knockback move without taking damage because I just didn't think it was a very interesting uh, encounter. Like I, I think the fight against Mrs. Thorne in this game is much more interesting because it's just a fight in a clock tower. That's pretty much all it is. You know, it's, it's a lot like that guy who helped you break out of prison on Unity and then ended up going against the assassins so you had to fight him. You know, that wasn't the best fight, but it was better than the fucking last bosses in these games. Like, truly, truly wonderfully bad bosses. And I don't, don't know how you would do them better, because it's not really a game that has ever done bosses all that well, but they'd have to overhaul the combat, or at least make it interesting. Like, when you counter them, maybe give it a different Nothing button here. afterwards that you have, have to have press, to based on what they do. But then you would have to condition the player the entire game of, of that counter system and it would change the game. And I don't know, I just... I'm really enjoying my time with Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I'm just having the same disappointments I always have with Assassin's Creed. And over time, it just exacerbates and it gets worse. But there are some really dumb and fun things in this that are really helping me enjoy it for longer which I really appreciate like I've been doing some of the the prize fighting the uh, cock fighting whatever you want to call it the bare knuckle boxing fight club stuff and it's not the best because it's you know the combat once you understand how to do it it's pretty simple stuff but it's interesting and it's introducing you to different characters and I'm going back through the Dickenses and the Darwin missions and some interesting stuff there, some really fun stuff, and just trying to get the different outfits and upgrading my gang and things. I think there's a lot to offer. I just, I don't know. I always wish that Ubisoft would really, really, you know, surprise me, and I guess they never will. They'll only surprise me when they bring out another Prince of Persia, and it's, you know, as good as the original trilogy, because I think those games were so good, and then we just got a couple of those offshoot ones, in the meantime, and they never did as well as that original trilogy because Assassin's Creed became the flagship for Ubi. 
but this mission right now we're going to be talking to this kid and then we're going to be following the tracks of the vehicle that escaped that took Henry the good news here is if you know where it's gone you don't have to follow the tracks you can kind of just kind of run there you can also follow the line of debris on the street that will help you navigate too and then we're just going to be doing some infiltration once we get there you can see the cart tracks it looks so but once the commentary is done on these the 100% sync walkthroughs complete and it'll be up on YouTube rather quickly because the videos aren't too long which makes them a joy to upload because they actually go up quite quick and we'll be moving on to possibly the DLC for Witcher in the space between um, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 coming out which comes out in about six days and that's going to be a realistic campaign walkthrough and hopefully it's going to be really challenging and need a walkthrough and then after that of course there's going to be Rise of the Tomb Raider and Fallout 4 Fallout 4 is going to be a blind playthrough, so if you're going to be coming to this channel, if you're new or if you're old, and you're, you're going to be looking for help on that game, I'm probably not going to be the finest source of advice for it, because I don't know how to play the game, and you're going to watch me learn, and sometimes it's really enjoyable to watch, other times it's probably quite frustrating, it's a cocktail of all the ingredients that make you know those big playthroughs quite interesting, but... Tomb Raider will be uh, a walkthrough and I'll probably have that one up before Fallout 4 because I'm going to prioritise um, the Tomb Raider and you might be wondering how I'm going to do it well I can only do live commentary for so long because I still have you know people who go to bed quite early around me and I can't do that when they're in bed because it's rude so the good news is that's going to free up time where normally I would be kicking my heels and wanting to record where now I can focus on doing the Tomb Raider so during the day I will be capturing and recording the live sessions for Fallout 4 and during the night I will be beating Tomb Raider and doing the re recording of the walkthrough so I think it's going to, to work out really well but I will no doubt get sick during the recording I will no doubt sound like my face is dying because that's just how it works I'm a little run down now, so my voice is definitely strained at this point. But, you know, we're still sticking with it. We've made, what is it, five walkthroughs in three weeks now. Pretty crazy stuff. But it's been a lot of fun, and I'm hoping that they're helping. But, come here. Do not kill anybody if you're a nice person. Or if you're like me, kill them all. <laughs> Because the objective is to kill two people with hanging barrels. And there's a lot of opportunities to do this. But the opportunity I'm going to use is one that lines itself up when we drop down here. Once the character stops fucking hugging the wall and grabbing everything. Because she's some kind of compulsive kleptomaniac ledge grabber. But interesting stealth sequence coming up. And I say stealth, it isn't really stealth at all. It's the kind of stealth that Assassin's Creed does well, which is the simple shit. Because when it gets complicated, it falls apart. But... Shiv all these people, keep pushing forward. And then there's going to be three people in this room. Two of them are going to be talking next to the hostage, and one of them is going to be stood on his own. One of them that's talking is going to move towards the other one who's on his own, and then we're going to drop the barrels on both of them, and then throw a knife at the final person's face. Once we've done that, we can talk to Henry, and then we can trigger the Michael Bay get the hell out of Dodge moment. But anybody who's wondering about the Dark Souls 3 beta footage that I've got, I am going to still be sharing it guys, I'm just going to be intermittently popping it up because there's a lot of videos going up on the channel right now because these projects are quite long, there's a lot of games that I'm covering and I'm hitting the sub box pretty hard and I appreciate that when you have quite a few people that you subscribe to and one person's putting up a lot of videos it really derails your feed and it can be annoying and I don't want to annoy people, it's not my intention but at the same time, I have to have a slightly higher upload rate at this moment because I'll never get on top of what's happening if I don't. And that is coming from somebody who has pretty shitty internet, so I'm constantly uploading to get this shit to you. It's just, it's... It's full-time thing, man, the, the uploading. It gets kind of obnoxious, especially when, you know, when you upload something, it kills your internet speed. Let's go. But... Now we have to escape, and we get to do some killing, and following Mr. Green, which he just stopped, and now I can't move, and I'm doing this weird animation of staggering, because he stopped in front of me. Always fun. As he pushes onwards through up into this market, 
I think it's a market anyway. There's going to be, see, there's a barrel that will give you an opportunity to get more barrel kills should you choose to do them. So you don't have to wait like I did. And then I got an achievement for dropping barrels on three people at once. Which, once again, folks, uh, I need to start turning my notifications off because I don't think it's very classy in a walkthrough, but it happens. Well, here's a little bit of a skirmish. You get introduced to some of the combat of the game, which I haven't really had too much time to talk about because it's generally being over really quickly because that's just how the combat works. It's it's kind of strange. If you mash B to, to counter, usually it will not work. But then I have people who say it does work, and then there are moments when I've done it and it's worked, so I don't really know how the counter system works, ideally. I like to tap it and be precise, but there are times when it still fails when you do that. So it's, it's kind of hit and miss. Um, the best way to, to fight, i found, is to stun people with the A. Get them so that they've got no life, and then stun the person next to them, and then the next time you press punch, it'll do one of those multi-kills, and it just gets rid of people. So it's, it's usually a decent way to do things, and then when somebody tries to attack you, just counter them, so on and so forth. But the combat is just, it's as simple as it ever was, it just looks a bit fancier. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.